Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and in this video we're going to continue to work on the Koenig race car and it's going to be a little bit of different things we're going to remove the old radiator we'll see how easy it is to fit a new one we'll also need to clean up all this cabling because that's a little bit of a mess and when all that is done we probably will clean up the frame a little bit before we put the suspension back up but I'll show you the suspension part that has now been reworked and also, meanwhile, I have received some other parts that we actually needed for the differential. And if you wonder what this race car is about, then keep watching the channel, because that is coming up very soon. And just maybe you guys can guess what it is in the comments. And those of you that know a little bit about race cars, you probably know what this is about. And you might remember from the previous video that we had bearings that were really worn and they actually were sitting in these holders. So I was able to find the number for them. Now I took the dimensions and I ordered brand new bearings from SKF. And they just arrived uh, yesterday. And as you can see, these are looking quite neat. They are exactly the same as the original ones that we removed so uh, we'll fit these uh, very shortly into these holders and then we can reassemble the differential and we also have cleaned up all the parts and inspected them uh, that we took apart from the suspension from the last video everything is now nicely powder coated as you can see we did check all the ball joints that they are in a good working condition and they actually are so everything is now about ready to be reassembled but before reinstalling that suspension on the right hand side there's a couple more things uh, i really need to do i need to check that radiator because that's in a very thorough state and that's the one we're going to replace uh, at least we're going to trial fit the new one it's so much easier when the suspension is not there i have easier access but we'll also look on the cabling because that doesn't look too good either and then maybe we do some work on the frame there we might give it a little bit extra paint i don't know yet we'll see so this video is going to be a little bit of everything together um, but sometimes that's how things are now this radiator is really a sorrow piece of art now that it's curved, that's okay, because that is how it looks like inside the Kawasaki Ninja. So I have a new radiator and also have a second hand radiator to replace this one with. But this whole back end here is really been re-welded and welded and welded all over again. So this doesn't look too good. I mean, the hoses are kind of weird. So what I'm going to do now is to remove the radiator and then... Um, try to remember where all these pipes are so i'm going to label all these hoses with these plastic tie wraps and there is actually a label area on that one and that makes it very handy and there's a zillion tie wraps on this um, in fact the whole radiator is held in place with tie wraps it's amazing how people work sometimes i i'm always stunned about things like this Instead of having one full host, no, they do this with pieces in between and just to save a little bit on the host, it's kind of insane. And of course, all these areas are prone for leaks. Huh? It's something you really don't want to do. Right there it goes. It looks pretty clean though, I have to say. Nice and green. See how loose the radiator is? So now it's time to disconnect all the other hoses and I already labeled them all properly so we know exactly where they go. Okay, and this is actually the uh, connector for the fan and we just need to remember this. So I will put a tag up. The 
is only one place where this radiator is held in place, and that's here on the top. All the other areas were just with tie wraps connected together. Of course, that is not something we'll do once we put the new radiator in. We'll make sure that we have all the proper connections up. So I guess cutting one more tie wrap and I should be able to pull out this sorry ass radiator. Here we go. Here we got two radiators. This is the one that came out of the car and you can see how all this is bent and crooked. I think actually that this came from a bike in Ninja that had an accident and they just recovered the radiator without getting a new one. This one is a second hand one which is still fine and I got it together with a spare engine. And this is the spare engine. It's exactly the same as what I have in the car and this has very low mileage on it. So I'm going to bench test it and then we might put it in the car. I don't know yet. It depends on how the engine turns out to be inside the race car. So this one I can keep. I know it's not leaking. I tested it. That one, it doesn't leak, but I don't think I'm going to keep it. This is too far gone. Now also the fan is a bit different. As you can see here, we have a bigger fan. And here's our new radiator, which we will install with proper shocks. Uh, right into this place here and let's see if that will fit okay yep that will just work fine i will have to lift it up a bit in the back and we'll need to make some supports here to the frame so it holds properly i uh, only got to make sure that the height here is not too high for the polyester shell that comes over it now i have not painted yet this shell but uh, that's going to be one of the things we still have to do very soon so oh, this is a bit difficult on your own but it does work so let's see if this is going to fit right And here we have the air duct and the radiator is actually typically inside here. So I want to make sure that it actually fits in. So I might have to measure a few things out and see um, how much space I actually have. And now I have the second hand radiator in place. Of course, I cleaned it up a bit. We still have to install the fan here, but this is the second hand one that I acquired from a Kawasaki uh, motorbike. And it's not the one that I bought uh, new. And there's a good reason for that. This is actually the new radiator. And uh, it is not bad, but I think the quality of the build is better on the second hand one, which is an original Kawasaki one. Uh, you can actually see it on many different areas. Just look on the stop here. It's so different uh, versus this one here. Um, look at that. I see the difference. So. That's why I decided to stay with the original Kawasaki uh, radiator. I think this is a aftermarket one and probably Chinese built. Uh, it's probably all right and I'm going to keep it as a spear. So I had to make a couple of aluminum brackets like this one right here. This is fitted now to the top. Uh, I haven't shown that to you on how you make these brackets, but that's just bending some aluminum bars. There's nothing special to that. I also made a second bracket right here on the top uh, that's going to the frame. And it's holding the radiator right here with a bolt on the top. Now, everything is not fixed yet because I'm just trial fitting it because I want to make sure that the shell fits over it. I did measure it out, so that should be all right. And then, of course, the other two brackets on the bottom. There's one there and there's one over here. And for that, um, I still need to drill the holes and put some rivets on so I can hold these brackets in place. So the radiator will be nicely held on the four corners. And this is the front support. Uh, the rivet is going to go through like so. And then that bracket will be fixed 
to the aluminum panel. There's two holes for that. Now the bolt itself is not straight onto the radiator. There is a rubber sleeve uh, around it like this one that I recovered uh, from the old uh, radiator. And that way the radiator will be solidly in place. I also have powder coated the induct frame and uh, that was a little bit rusty but we blasted it and then I really um, powder coated it like all the rest so I'm not going to show you that on how that was done because it's always the same process. So now I'm going to take the radiator out so I can actually um, put these brackets into place. So I need to unbolt everything first. Oops, that almost fell. And this is the rubber support on the bottom, as I mentioned before. It is good because it takes some of that vibration away. All right. To position it a little bit. There we go. This fan is the one that was on the radiator and it didn't really fit properly. Now that's the fan that I had on the second hand radiator and this is a much bigger fan and I think that's the correct one. So I already cleaned it up. This is the one we go in to install and I already have tested it that it works and that just does the job right. So we're not going to use this little one here. We can use all the cooling we can get. All right. So we got these little nuts in the back. So that's what we're going to use here on the top. I'm missing one here, but that's okay. I'm going to put a bolt through it. And on the bottom, I have one as well. So that should work out just fine. So let's see how this guy fits. And it should probably be something like this. Yeah, so that's how it goes on. Let's see if we can get it in. That's number one. And for the top one, I'm going to use a bolt. And a self locking nut in the back. And that should do the job. So we got the fan installed. I got a battery connected. And I'm going to see if the fan works. If it doesn't hit the radiator, of course. And that doesn't seem to be the case. And then I want to make sure that it is actually sucking air through the radiator because I have air coming in from the ducting and then through the radiator, through the fan and out. So that's the way it should blow. And this is a DC motor. It can probably turn in both directions. So I want to make sure. Whoops. Notice that it's sucking in. That is not the right direction. So it's got to go the other direction. And now you can see that it's nicely blowing out. Now the good thing about this blow is that because the shell will be over here, it's going to blow back a bit to the motor. And we'll have to clean up this spider wrap of cables here. I don't know why people do things like this, but um, we're going to put a nice hardness around it, make it shorter, maybe put new connectors up where we need them because that is a bit of a mess. Uh, these connectors are not used, but if you look on those, um, you see some loops on them and I got to be careful that they don't drop out because otherwise I won't remember what it is. Um, they are not really proper connectors as what you would expect. Um, let's see. Yes, we got some more loops over here, and then we got some cables that are straight connected. Uh, I guess these are probably soldered on. Now to sort out that cabling, we will have to do a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to disconnect and remove all the old connectors that are not used. So we're just going to cut them off. But of course, if you cut them off, 
then you need to insulate the wires. And for that, we're going to use what we call heat shrink. And this is heat shrink. It's material that shrinks once you heat it up. So you put it over the wire and then it shrinks when you heat it up and it's a very nice insulation. So that's one thing. So therefore, of course, you will need a uh, heat gun and I'm going to use my paint stripper for that. Um, I won't make it too hot because otherwise I'm going to burn the wires. That's something you don't want to do. Otherwise, I will actually have to reconnect because there are connectors and cables and, and wires connected on these old sockets and they are not really in a very good condition. So if they loop something, it doesn't really make sense to keep that loop. I just going to put those two together. And for that, I'm going to be using my soldering iron. And, and here is that one. Now, this happens to be a temperature controlled one. I like to use that with some pretty good soldering uh, material um, and this does not have that flux inside uh, which is okay and of course we'll have to strip the wires and all that and then you'll see me doing that and also then the wiring loom that is there uh, I want to protect that as well because now it's kind of taped with insulation tape and for that there's a couple of options uh, this is a tube actually which is cut open on one side and by the way guys this is a recovered tube from something else and you can slide this over the wiring loop you can buy those as well but this is actually from a dishwasher believe it or not that's why it's kind of white but you can buy those tubes uh, flex tubes as they call them um, which are actually open up on one side as you can see and then you can slide the cable loom inside or you slide it over it. Uh, this is one that I bought, it's about two meters. And then we have these spiral um, wire loom protectors. And this is like, I don't know if you can see it, but this is like a, a spiral and you can just twist it over there. Pretty good stuff. So that's what we're gonna do first of all, because that thing is a real mess. So while the southern airing is warming up, I'm going to start cleaning up a bit this mess. And um, these cables here, these are the ones that are going to the dashboard. So these are already been uh, soldered together and shrunk together with uh, heat shrink. So that's good. But there are some others around uh, that are like con little connectors that go inside. There's some of them with a loop and then others are not used at all. So um, I'm gonna start cutting off those that are not in use and uh, you might wonder why I'm doing that. Well, the reason is I don't want to have all this junk floating around. Um, so let's cut this off. That's one. Uh, let's see. This one has a loop, so we can't cut it off yet. We've got to find out which wires are forming the loop, and then we create a new loop by soldering the wires together. Uh, this one, well, that is a connection, so we have to create that. Let's see, do we have any others? Yeah, we do have. And the reason we have these uh, is because this comes from, is a wiring loom from a bike. And obviously on a bike, uh, you have blinkers and you have stoplights and you have all kind of other things, controls on the handles, which of course we do not have on this race car. So uh, that's why I can disconnect and cut all these cables off. There we go. Now, obviously, I don't want to leave all these cables open-ended like they are now. And that's why we're going to put some heat uh, shrink on it, on each and in every individual wire. And then we put a global one on. Now, heat shrink comes in all different kind of sizes. And uh, of course, I only need the size for the right wire, as you can see here. Uh, I will slide them a little bit backward at the end before I heat them up. So they really um, will cover the ends of the wire. Otherwise it doesn't make a lot of sense. So I'm gonna move it like this so it stays. All right, now there's a couple of ways of doing this. I can use my soldering iron to actually um, heat up the heat, the heat shrink. And you can see how that shrinks, right? That's one way. And I like to do that in the beginning. So the tips are smaller. It doesn't slide over that easy. And then I will use my heat gun for the rest of it. Now 
Now I have to admit that the paint stripper is most likely not the most efficient way of doing it. But it works. You can see how these things are shrinking together. All right. Now that they are insulating the wire, I'm going to put them together and put a bigger sleeve over it. So let's see if we can fit them all into this tube here. I might need a bigger one. I'm not sure. No, that's going to fit. And I don't need this huge tube here. Let's cut that off. And he shrink it again. All right. And that should be it. So I'm going to do this for all the remaining wires and then we start making the connections. And this old insulation tape, well, I guess we're gonna take that off and if you heat it up with your uh, paint stripper or whatever heat gun you have, then that glue melts easily and it comes off very, very easily. So that's the first part done. So now we're going to work on the rest of the cables. Now once this is off, we'll see what kind of um, color code we have on the wires so we can make sure that we connect things in the proper way. Because if we don't do that, we will have an issue. Now, I don't know what it says here. It says, uh, ignition and stop and this is start so we got two wires ignition and start all right lucky that there's an old label on it because sometimes there is just nothing on it and then you have to measure it all out with an ohmmeter all right and here we have a and on this one, we have a cross connection between two. Not sure what that is used for. Again, um, taking off all this ugly tape, and then we'll see. So let me do that, and then we'll right, we are right back. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do on one cable, and the rest is always going to be the same. So here we see a bridge between two connectors. So I don't need to know at this moment in time what that is uh, to clean all this up. So I know this is a yellow wire on this side because that's where the connector goes in. And on the other side, it's the top right corner and it's a black and yellow cable. So what I'm going to do is write this down so then at least I know what it is and that's how we're going to solder those two together. But not on that length, a little bit shorter. So I'm gonna start by cutting them off. So I know these are the two I need to connect. These are my two wires and all we need to do now is strip them and then put solder them together. And I already shortened them up a bit. So let's uh, see how easy that goes. I like to twist them a little bit and then we're going to tin them before we put that together. Right, so. And this is most likely a big clutter of wires for you 
but this is the wire we just uh, stripped and thinned so now I'm going to put the um, shrimp socket over it all the way back and now we're going to solder these things together. I only have two hands so that's why I like to use a clamp like this so I clamp in the wire at least one and then the second one I will hold against it uh, when I'm soldering it. That's the only way for me uh, to work it. All right. So let's start and see if we can get this done. So I'm going to thin it a little bit more. And all it takes is connect those two together, let it cool down, and we are done. And once it's really cool, we just move the heat shrink over it and heat it up and that connection is made. All right, and then we heat it up. And that's finished. So now I need to do all the rest and I'm not going to show that to you guys because that would be just way too much to show. And as you can see the cabling is now all done and we use the flexible tube uh, for the wires coming actually from the cockpit. Of course this is still all loose, uh, we'll fit it later with tie wraps uh, but first we need to do some more work on the frame. So folks this is it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it. We have trial fitted the radiator, we know that is now going to fit. Of course we have not connected in full yet because I'm still awaiting some of the hoses and we have actually cleaned up all this weird cabling. So I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye!